Hello and welcome. In today's video, I will be talking about the dwarven hulls of the Blue Mountains, Belagost and Nogrod. Now, both Nogrod and Belagost would be founded by the late Years of the Trees. It is known that the dwarves of the Blue Mountains were the Firebeards and Strombeams. Though which clan of dwarves dwelt in which mountain hall is unknown. What we do know is that before the rising of the sun and the moon, the dwarves would come into contact with the Sindar elves of Doriath, and friendship would form between both Belagost and Doriath and Nogrod and Doriath. The dwarves of Nogrod would especially have friendship with Eol, the dark elf, for he was a master craftsman, and he stayed and visited from time to time in the halls of Nogrod. The dwarves of the Blue Mountains would also forge many weapons and arms for Thingol of Doriath for his great armories. And in the first battle of Beleriand, when Thingol would rout the orcs, the dwarves of the Blue Mountains would come forth and finish off the orcs. Now the dwarves of the Blue Mountains would also help Finrod of the Noldor in creating the elven realm of Nargothrond, and they would give him the name of Felagund. Now both Nogrod and Belagost stayed out of the majority of the wars of Beleriand for the most part, as the wars were between the Noldor and Morgoth. But the dwarves of Belagost specifically would join in the Union of Mithros in 472 of the First Age, and Azakal, the king of Belagost, would lead a dwarven host in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. The battle itself was long and most detail involves the western host of the Union. The dwarves of Belagost would be in the eastern force as their halls dwelt in the east. The dwarves would be one of the last forces in the eastern host after the betrayal of Uldor and his easterlings. The dwarves would be the only ones of the battle who could withstand the fires of the dragon Glauron and battled the dragon. Azakal would be trapped under Glauron's feet, and he thrusted his knife into the dragon's stomach, a wound that would force Glauron to retreat, but Azakal himself would be slain, and the dwarves would take his body and depart in mourning. Neither foe nor friend would harry the dwarves as they returned to their mountain halls. Nogrod would have no part in these events, as it seems to me that Nogrod were primarily the crafters of the Dwarf of the Blue Mountains, whereas Belagos seemed to be more active with a larger army. Now that's not to say that the Dwarves of Belagos didn't forge and weren't crafters, because they clearly were, as too did the Dwarves of Nogrod also have an army, as we will see later. In 503, the Dwarves of Nogrod would serve under Thingol, King of Doriath, in combining the Nauglamir and the Silmaril that Baron and Luthien stole from Morgoth. During this long process, the dwarves began to desire the craft, and upon its completion demanded payment, being the Nauglamir. Thingol, in pride and rage, would send the dwarves off with no payment, and so the dwarves would slay him and flee, and the guards hunted and slew all but two. Now these two dwarves would return and say Thingol attacked them without paying them, and the folk of Nogrod would be enraged and amass a host of dwarves. Now the dwarves of Nogrod would ask for aid from Belagost. The dwarves of Belagost would be wise and would try to stay their friends from this act of war, but the dwarves of Nogrod would not be restrained. Thus the Battle of the Thousand Caves began, and many Sindar elves would be slain, including Mablon, and the dwarves stole all the treasure of Doriath. The dwarves of Nogrod would take their loot and journey back to Nogrod. But little did they know, messengers from Doriath went out searching for Baron for aid. The dwarves would be ambushed by Baron, his son Dior, and a company of green elves at Sarn Ford. The dwarves would be pushed back into the woods and were finished off by the Ents that lived in the woods. Now, after the War of Wrath had ended, both Belagost and Nogrod were falling into ruin as the destruction Beleriand had faced broke the arid Luwin, 
and the mountain halls were in disrepair. Despite the mountains being under an extreme ruined state, the dwarves of both Nogrod and Belagost would remain in their mountain halls for decades into the Second Age, until forty years after the War of Wrath, a great migration would occur out of the Blue Mountains, and many dwarves went off to join with the dwarves of Khazad-dûm. So Nogrod and Belagost were abandoned, but would not be forgotten, as many centuries would pass in the Third Age, after the sack of Erebor, Thorin Oakenshield would lead a group of survivors to the ruined halls of the Blue Mountains, where they re-established the mines, but dug mostly coal and iron rather than gold and jewels. In these halls, Gandalf the Grey would discuss his plans with Thorin about reclaiming the Lonely Mountain, and after the quest was accomplished, the halls of Nogrod weren't abandoned, but they did have a major population decrease. By the time of the Lord of the Rains, a migration of dwarves went back to the Blue Mountains in order to escape the shadow of Sauron in the east. It's unknown what happened to the dwarf kingdoms after the fall of Sauron and the end of the Third Age, and so ends the history of the dwarven kingdoms of the Blue Mountains, Nogrod and Belagost. I hope you all enjoyed this combined history of the two Blue Mountain kingdoms. Please feel free to leave a comment telling me how I can better improve my videos and the telling of Tolkien's great tales. Thank you, and as the elves say, Namarie.